I'm just being a messenger and providing some glue for us to be able to unite and come together around some central causes. And it was laid out for us back in 1964 in Malcolm X's speech, The Ballad of the Bullet. He said, we suffer from, economic, from uh, political oppression, economic exploitation, and social degradation, which is basically us being politically oppressed. We're burdened. Um, the political system is set up unjust and unfair. Economically, we're exploited. Um, you know, we are the largest consumers as, as black people. We're the largest consumers in America, but yet we're the poorest in America. We lead, um, or excuse me, we are the least in family wealth, the least in home ownership, the least in real estate ownership, the least in business ownership. So we have to combat those things with economic stimulation, which is part of why we're here in Baltimore is to actually bring economic training, financial literacy training, real estate training, entrepreneurship training, um, and to actually stimulate our economy through real estate development um, to unite our people um, to form political power to combat our political oppression by uniting us around understanding that we are actual people. The World Court United Nations does not look at black people as a people. That's factual. We're not considered a people. We're just a race in America. Um, we're not a nation of people or um, a people that could even ask for reparations or restitution for our human rights violations because we not, we're not one. We're not what Japanese Americans were when they got 1.6 billion from America. We're not what um, the Native Americans were when they got millions land and sovereignty from America. And the Japanese Americans got 1.6 billion, just not for the ones who suffered the two years in internment camps in America back in the 1940s, but their heirs, their descendants, also got reparations and restitution. And we're not a people like the Jews were in Germany, where they got 1.6 billion, uh, just 150 million last year alone. Um, and Israel, right, as reparation, restitution for the human rights crimes committed against them um, by Hitler and Nazi Germany. Um, they received 1.6 billion reparations, but they all were a people. African Americans or black people um, who we have now coined and have now identified ourselves as new Africans, um, we have not been established as a people by the uh, world court laws or human, human rights law or human rights court. So what we've done to combat our political oppression is we've adopted the flag that Marcus Garvey, our forefather, set out in front of us. And we've adopted some uh, provisional government ideas that the Republican, Republic of New Africa, our elders have laid out for us, the red, black, and green flag, red for our bloodshed, through our enslavement, police brutality, the lynchings, all that we've been through, all the blood that we shed from the time we were captured, black for a unified people, the people, the melanin, and green for the land, the land we were, we once had, the motherland, the land we were enslaved on, and the land that we are owed. And also green for the money, why not? So this is our new African flag, this is our identity. Every people, ever, every ethnicity, every nation, every pretty much race, if you want to call it that, of people have a flag, they have a homeland, they have a lineage, except for what were formerly known as African Americans, new Africans. We haven't had one, but now we can adopt one. And the importance of that is one, uniting us, there's two things. One, uniting us around one common cause, one common thing, which is our nationhood, our flag, right? Just like Puerto Rican Americans, Jamaican Americans, Italian Americans, Irish Americans, Russian Americans, Japanese Americans, and every other kind of American. New Africans, formerly known as African Americans, we haven't had anything to identify ourselves with and unite around. Um, we've been divided over being red blood, blue crip, or gangster disciple, or vice lord, or BGF, or Christian, or Muslim, or Protestant, or Baptist, or Catholic, or New Israelite, or everything else in the world divides us, but we need to keep all those things personal and at home, as, as our forefather Malcolm said, and worry about what unites us, what will bring us together. We're Kappa, and Sigma, and, and every other fraternity, and for sorority, and everything else, uh, we have our different brands and companies and businesses. Uh, you're a Cavaliers fan. You're a Lakers fan. You're this. Everything divides us. We have not one thing that unites us, but we do. Now, we have to identify that um, because uni, uni, unity, unify, uni means one. We have to be one. So we need something to rally us around to be one. The bigger importance of that is to become a people by world court law, human rights law, 
to become a people, all you have to do is acknowledge yourself as a people. If a group of people, a critical mass of people, acknowledge themselves as a people, as a nation, and then, right, we have to rally ourselves first to self-determine what we can do for us. No one's going to save us but us. Nobody's going to sprinkle magic dust on New Africans, a.k.a. black people, a.k.a. African Americans, and make us whole. No one's going to do it for us. No other race is going to come in and swoop and save us. We have to save ourselves. And the first step to doing that is unifying ourselves because not only does it boost the morale of us as a people and give us something to strive for, it also allows us once one country throughout the whole world. It could be Russia who hates America. It could be uh, a Middle Eastern nation. It could be an African nation, a Caribbean nation, South American nation. If anybody in the world recognizes new Africans as a people, and all we're saying is we deserve the right to be a people because we were stripped from our nationhood, our lineage, from being a people. So why are we the only ones in America lost without a nation, or without any identity? That's not fair. And if you're a black person, African American, if you want to call yourself that, if you're that, and you're not excited about the opportunity to once in your lifetime be considered something as a people, as a nation, for all our ancestors been through, for all your forefathers been through, for all the men and women that were enslaved and slaved and lynched and castrated and mutilated and experimented on and beaten and hosed. If you're not excited about the fact that we have a, a concept to now unify ourselves and be whole and be a people, and if one country in the world recognizes us as a people, we now can have a seat at the world court and the United Nations as an observer and bring our human rights violations to the world court for reparations, for restitution, for reconciliation, for repair aid, for sovereignty, for land. If that doesn't excite you, you're a sellout as a black person. You are on the other side, like draw the line in the sand. Like why wouldn't you want to have what everybody else in America has? Everybody except for you as an African-American or black person. No, you're a new African. You're something different. This is what you are. Claim your identity. Be proud of being black, being new African, being African-American right be proud of that the same way a jewish person is proud to be jewish or puerto rican person is proud to be puerto rican or italian person is proud to be italian when they hang their flags on their cars or when they have their beads on their neck why are you so ashamed of being who you are think about that why are you so ashamed you shouldn't be you should be just as proud there's nothing wrong with the melanin in your skin there's nothing wrong with what you come from your lineage your ancestors there's nothing wrong with what we're trying to fight for it's only human rights you're not wrong for that Stop the, oh, we can just be equal, just be one. We can't be equal when for 300 years we couldn't read or write. 300 years we couldn't own land. For 300 years we couldn't own businesses. And then 150 years there was Jim Crow, segregation, mass incarceration, police brutality, and all these other levels of oppression. You don't just start after that and say we're equal and we're fair. Like, I can't come rob your house blind and then say, hey, look, I got all the goods, but now we're equal, we're fair. Let's go. How are we fair? Where's the, where's, the, where's the makeup for the injustices? That's fair. That's equality. So, and the reason why I say we're not identifying with African-American, because it sounds brainless. If Hitler would have freed the Jews, right, before they caught Hitler and bombed Germany, if he would have stopped the Holocaust... And say, you know what? Jews are freed from enslavement. You know what was I thinking? I was crazy. Jews, you're freed from enslavement now. You can now be cities of citizens of Nazi Germany. I don't think the Jews would run around calling themselves Jewish Nazis. Or I don't think the Jews would accept being under the authority of the Nazis who just had them in enslavement in concentration camps. They'd be crazy for staying under the same authority of the government that treated them that way. And for identifying themselves as people of that government. As Jewish Nazis. And some of you may argue, oh, they'll be Jewish Germans. All the same when the Nazi regime is the one that's running them. So, why? The same reason it makes sense or it would be brainless for a Jewish person to do that. And I think they would have more pride in themselves and more dignity to, to identify themselves as their capturers and the ones who enslaved them and the ones who oppressed them. Black people need to have the same level of pride and dignity to not succumb to just because you grew up in elementary school and they taught you you were African-American and they told you about the red, white, and blue flag and you were brainwashed ever since the time you were in kindergarten through high school that you're this person 
Look at the reality now that you're an adult or you're hearing this message. Look at the reality. Who are you really? And does it make sense for you to be labeling yourself with the same government that is still allowing police to kill our people and get off every day? That is still allowing people to live in environments like Baltimore knowing the government is the one that redlined those communities. They created the ghettos. Google what I'm saying. Look it up for yourself so you can be awakened. They put us in the ghettos after we couldn't read or write for 300 plus years or own businesses or land. We had no family wealth. How do you come up out of that with no repair aid, no restitution? That's not fair. The same government you claim to be a part of and be one of and be equal has dogged your people out. They've treated you so poorly. Your own flesh, your own blood, your own lineage, your own people. People that came from the African shores. The heirs of Africans enslaved here in America. Like, have some pride. Have some dignity. Malcolm said a man can only climb your back if your back is bent. Stand up. Posture. Let's become a nation to at least sit at the table at the United Nations or World Court and be acknowledged by somebody so we can bring our human rights issues to the table. Even if it means we're still here in America, let's be here in America at an even eyesight, even playing field, even level. It's not even. It's not equal. They never made it equal. They tried to make it equal for the Japanese Americans and gave them $1.6 billion. They tried to make it equal for the Native Americans and gave them land and sovereignty. And they're still doing bad on the reservations because they, they couldn't handle the, they, the oppression was too deep for them. Germany tried to make it even for the Jews who were in the Holocaust by giving them $1.6 billion and their heirs and Israel. They had land. So why haven't blacks got zero? We haven't got $1,000. We got zero. For all the oppression, for all the enslavement, for all the lynchings, for all the police brutality. Understand what the government really did to black people. And I'm saying this to all people of all races. They really, really did a number on black people. And did nothing about it but a 2008 apology for slavery. It's fact that the government, it, Google this as well. The courts have decided that the American government had a part to play in Martin Luther King's assassination. One of the greatest leaders who's got an American holiday and all that. The government had a part to play in the assassination. That's a fact. Look it up. The government, the FBI director, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, had Cointel Pro, a government organization funded by, gov well, by taxpayer dollars, to break up civil rights groups and put Martin and Malcolm against each other and, and, and kill the Black Panthers and anyone that wanted to fight for freedom and independence of black people. You, you, you peg groups who fought back saying, oh, they killed cops or they, or they killed this or they did that or they defended themselves. What about all the cops that killed black people? Should black people never defend themselves? Should the Jewish people not have defended themselves against a Nazi Germany that was killing them? What's the difference? If, a, if your government is killing you, shouldn't you defend yourself? Don't look at us as black. Take the skin, the melanin off, and imagine if we were Jews here in America who suffered slavery here in America for 300 years and Jim Crow here in America for 100 plus years. But we were Jewish people, not black people. You probably feel different about us. You probably are rally with us. Black people, you probably feel different about yourself if you were a Jewish person who went through the same things that black people went through and still go through today. The problem is empathy. The problem is that there's a disconnect in the human mind and heart when it comes to black people. You don't see us the same, and we don't even see ourselves the same. But it's time for that to change. This is real life facts. This is real life conditions of what we go through. I'm just being a voice. I'm just being a messenger understand it's all logic this is not even like militant revolutionary it's like none of that it's just logic let's do something about it we have to solve our own problems first as new africans so first and foremost understand who you are what you want to be understand there's a lot of groups out there and everybody has a different idea i say let's hey let's whatever we gotta do we gotta vote whatever we gotta do is bring it to the table let's decide on one thing for me the elders already laid it out I'm not an old African, I'm not a current day African, but I'm a new African. I'm not an African American. I'm not a black person. And I could semi identify with black, but that won't be my nationality I check. Like you can't run around only calling yourself a black person. Like that's a color. Like you gotta have some kind of nationhood, some kind of lineage, some kind of identity. And that's the red, black, and green. New African people. 
and that's what we here at YMC represent is just the advancement independence 